Good afternoon on this Sunday, October 13th. I'm Yumna Naufal and these are today's headlines. A future TV revelation. Several members of the Arab Democratic Party are behind the twin bombings in the northern city of Tripoli back in August. Some two million Muslims pour out to the holy city of Mecca to begin the annual Hajj. Their numbers reduced on fears of the MERS virus. A car bomb explodes in a crowded street in the city north of the Iraqi capital, killing 13 and wounding over 30. Several members of the Arab Democratic Party are behind the twin bombings in the northern city of Tripoli that took place in August. Informed sources speaking to Future say that seven members of the party carried out the attack that targeted as Salam and Taqwa mosques on August 23rd. Yusuf Jab was behind the bombing at Al Salam Mosque, while Ahmad Mirhi was behind the attack at the other one. The sources said that Mirhi drove a booby trapped car to the mosque before detonating it. Moreover, they revealed that Syrian intelligence plotted the attack in cooperation with arrested cleric Sheikh Ahmad Al Gharib. Syrian intelligence provided the booby trapped cars, and an arrested suspect, Hassan Jafar, allowed their safe passage through the Lebanese city of Hirmil to the town of al Qubayat in the northern region of Akkar. The seven-member Arab Democratic Party group soon received the cars and took them to the Tripoli neighborhood of Jabal Mohsin, which is a stronghold of the party. Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja is slamming political power's failures to form a new government, saying that the delay is killing Lebanon's democratic and constitutional system. He said during the LF Europe annual convention that President Michel Slaiman and Prime Minister designate Tamam Salam should form a new cabinet in a manner that meets their aspirations and relieves their consciousness. He explained the Constitution grants the President and Prime Minister designate the authority to exclusively form a government in a manner that they see fit. He stressed, should the delay continue, then the president and premier designate themselves would unfortunately be hindering the formation of the cabinet. Salam has said conditions and counter conditions set by the rival sides have brought his efforts to form a cabinet to a stalemate. And speaking of, Prime Minister designate Salam Salam has paid tribute to Wadiya Safi, who died on Friday at the age of 92. Wadiya, he said, was a pure person in his smile, his stone, and during his gatherings. In the statement, he said also that his mind, look, and voice were all pure. Salam, who offered his condolences to the family of the Lebanese musician, said that Safi never missed an opportunity to sing for his country from the depth of his heart. Safi suffered a stroke on Friday night and died after being transferred to the Bellevue Medical Center. He was part of Lebanon's musical landscape for nearly 75 years, creating a modernized form of folk music by blending traditional melodies with an urban sound. Clashes between rival rebel factions left at least 44 fighters dead in battles to control neighborhoods of the city of Aleppo in Syria. According to an activist group, the three days of fighting was between Al-Qaeda's Islamic State of Iraq and Sham, which is known as ISIS, which is a rival group formerly known as Ghurba Sham. The British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that 14 of the dead belonged to ISIS, which was able to control three neighborhoods in Aleppo. Rebel groups have become increasingly fractured and enabling fighters linked to Al-Qaeda to assume prominent roles in the battle. In an audio message on Friday, the leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, urged fighters in Syria to rise above organizational loyalties and party partnership and unite to set up an Islamic State. A car bomb exploded in a crowded city in the city north of the Iraqi capital, killing 13 and wounding more than 32. The dead included seven women and a six-year-old child. The blast in Samara came as people shopped ahead of Eid al-Adha, known as the Feast of Sacrifice, which begins this Tuesday. Militants seeking to cause maximum casualties frequently bomb places in Iraq where crowds of people gather, including shopping districts, markets, cafes, and mosques. Violence in the country has reached a level not seen since 2008 when Iraq was just emerging from a brutal sectarian conflict. 
Diplomats and analysts say the Shia-led government's failure to address the grievances of the Sunni Arab minority, which complains of political exclusion and abuses by security forces, has driven the rise in the unrest. Coming up next, a few dozen Moroccans stage a symbolic kiss-in in support of three teenagers arrested. The story when we return. Welcome back. Some two million Muslims poured out of the holy city of Mecca to begin their annual Hajj. The numbers reduced on fears of the MERS virus. Saudi Health Minister Abdullah Rabia told reporters late on Saturday that authorities had so far detected no cases among the pilgrims of the virus, which has killed 60 people worldwide, 51 of them in Saudi Arabia. The pilgrims moved from Mecca to nearby Mina Valley by road, by train, or on foot. The men wearing ihram, the seamless two-piece white garment that rituals require. The women covered up except for their faces and hands. In Mina, a small site with 45,000 fire-resistant tents that can accommodate 2 million people, they will pray and rest before moving on to Mount Arafat on Monday for the climax of the pilgrimage rituals. The recently constructed electric railway is scheduled to carry 400,000 of the pilgrims taking part in the world's largest annual gathering. Cyclone Phelan left a trail of destruction along India's east coast and at least seven people dead after the biggest evacuation in the country's history helped minimize casualties. As emergency teams began assessing damage from the country's biggest cyclone in 14 years, a massive relief effort went into full swing to distribute food to an estimated one million evacuees, clear roads and help the injured. Most of the local population spent the night huddled in shelters and public buildings as defeating winds flattened flimsy homes, uprooted trees and sent glasses and asbestos strips flying through the air. The worst affected area around the town of Gobalpur in Orissa, where the eye of Phelan, packing winds of 200 kilometers an hour, came ashore, remained cut off with emergency services rushing to reach there. Iran is, will not agree to ship out its stockpile of enriched uranium, one of its main negotiators said, ahead of a, the crunch talks with world powers on its nuclear program. We will not negotiate about the value, levels, and the methods of enrichment, but shipping out the material is a red line for Iran. This is according to the Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arashi, and he said this to the state broadcaster. The remarks come on an eve of the two-day talks in Geneva, the first meeting between Iranian negotiators and world powers since President Hassan Rouhani, the reputed moderate, took office in August. The red line adds that Tehran's insistence on what is considered its right to operate a uranium enrichment program on its soil, which could provide fuel for both civilian and military objectives. Iran currently has a stockpile of 6,774 kilograms of low-level uranium enriched and nearly 186 kilograms of medium enriched material with 20% purity, according to the latest figures by the UN nuclear watchdog in September. In other news, Italy and Malta are urging European partners to do more to stop a migrant crisis, which the Maltese Prime Minister says has turned the Mediterranean Sea into a cemetery after another boat sank off Sicily, killing dozens more people. The comments come a day after a boat packed with 250 migrants sank in the Mediterranean Sea, killing 34, the latest in a string of boat accidents involving migrants trying to enter Europe for a better life. Italian and Maltese Navy ships recovered the victims' bodies and rescued 206 of the people on board. He said he would join Italy in pressing for action at the next European Council. Arrival of migrants from North Africa has grown steadily over the past two decades, with many making the journey in summer when the Mediterranean Ocean is calmer. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has left Afghanistan after failing to reach a full agreement over the withdrawal of U.S. troops next year. John Kerry said in Kabul that despite agreeing with Afghani President Hamid Karzai on a set of core elements in a deal that would allow troops to remain in Afghanistan, both sides were unable to settle on the crucial issue of immunity for U.S. troops stationed in the country. Karzai says the talks had focused on protecting Afghani sovereignty and that major differences had been resolved, including a U.S. request to run independent counterterrorism missions in the country. Such operations carried out by the U.S. have long infuriated the Afghani president, who has been demanding that Washington agree to share intelligence instead. 
Karzai said the U.S. snatching of a senior Pakistani Taliban commander was an example of the kind of action that Afghanistan wants to avoid. And world finance officials are keeping pressure on the United States to resolve the trouble budget stalemate. The impasse in Washington is threatening a market-rattling default on U.S. debt that would seriously threaten the global economy. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund wrapped up three days of talks in Washington on Saturday. And the IMF's policy setting committee warned that the U.S. needed to take urgent action to address the matter. Look, it's a clear negative. Um, and it's a clear negative when we think about the key element of recovery that has to take place in the next one to two years, which is the recovery of private investment. Private investment hinges on confidence. And uh, if we don't get clear resolution um, on the U.S. fiscal deficit and the debt issue, uh, it's going to be hard to see how that confidence is going to come back anywhere. So it's a critical issue for all of us. We would hope is that uh, the Chinese economy does participate in, the, in restoring as, m as much stability as is possible in the global economy. And given that it is the second largest economy in the world, uh, we would certainly hope that it is very attentive to the development of its banking and non-banking credit sector, which has uh, significantly fueled the development of credit. Uh, lately, both for housing and for local governments. And that's an issue that we know our, our Chinese colleagues and, and members are very well aware of. A few dozen Moroccans have staged a symbolic kiss-in on Saturday in support of three teenagers arrested for posting pictures on Facebook of two of them smooching. Only around a dozen couples actually locked lips in the gathering outside Parliament, but the demonstrators insisted they had defended the right to public displays of affection in Morocco's conservative society. The kissing case has sparked uproar online with netizens protesting against what they see as creeping conservatism in the Muslim country, long known for being relatively liberal and tolerant. More than 2,000 people had indicated they would take part in Saturday's kissing, but the vast majority failed to show indicating a gulf between online activism and actual on-the-street protests. The demonstrator gathered outside Parliament for a symbolic kiss of love, and one participant, Nizar Benamate, said the message is to defend love, the freedom to love, and kiss freely. Raeta Sairanen and Taisto Mietinen of Helsinki, Finland, defended their title as champions at the 14th annual North American Wife Caring Championship in Maine. In addition to the 2013 North American Wife Caring Championship title, Mietin and Siaren take home cash equal to five times her weight as well as her weight in beer. Now, Mietinen and past competitor wife Christina Hapanen won the 2012 uh, competition and together have also won the Wife Caring World Championships in Finland the past five consecutive years. Now, wife carrying is a sport where male competitors race while each carrying a female teammate. The objective is for the male to carry the female through an obstacle track in the fastest time. Registered teams do not need to be legally married, and uh, carrying form is the competitor's choice, though most of them use the Estonian carry, where the wife holds her husband around his waist and tightens her legs around his neck, thereby freeing the husband's hands. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Future TV revelations. Several members of the Arab Democratic Party are behind the twin bombings in the northern city of Tripoli. This was back in August. Some two million Muslims pour out of the holy city of Mecca to begin the annual Hajj. Their numbers reduced on fears of the MERS virus. And a crowded street in Baghdad, a car bomb explodes in next to the Iraqi capital, killing 13 people, wounding more than 32. Those are your Sunday headlines live on Future Television in Beirut. I'm Yuna Nofal, wishing you a good week ahead.